Hi, I'm Olid, and this is Assis, a distributed file system that exploits client local non volatile memory to provide orders of magnitude better performance and availability. This work is a result of a collaboration between a number of researchers around the world. Bioaddressable non volatile memory, such as Intel's Optane DC persistent memory module, is now commercially available. NVM provides a byte addressable load store interface with near DRAM performance. For example, writing 256 bytes to NVM takes just 94 nanoseconds, 15% longer than the 82 nanosecond write latency for DRAM. Second, NVM cost is only a fraction of that of DRAM. A 128 gigabyte Optane DC DIMM costs $3.8 per gigabyte, 40% cheaper than a same size DRAM DIMM. Finally, unlike DRAM, NVM is non-volatile. It persists data across crashes and can thus be used as a storage medium. Added together, these features are driving the adoption of node local NVM at scale. Because of this trend, distributed file systems like Ceph and NFS have started to integrate non-volatile memory. Their model is one of remote server-sided data and metadata storage and management. Client memory is treated as a volatile block cache managed by the client's kernel. To mitigate software overheads of networking when going to remote NVM, these file systems have also started to integrate remote direct memory access or RDMA. But is that enough to attain the low latencies that NVM has to offer? The first challenge with this model is that network and kernel overheads dominate the IO latency of NVM. To see this more clearly, let's look at an example. Here, an application wants to write 256 bytes durably to a file. As a reminder, it takes 94 nanoseconds to write this amount to NVM. To perform the write, the application first crosses into the kernel, which updates locally cached blocks. This incurs a roughly one microsecond overhead. Next, the kernel level file system client accesses the metadata and data servers to update the file, which for consistency has to occur in sequence causing two times the eight microsecond latency. Finally, the data is written to NVM, which requires the aforementioned 94 nanoseconds for 256 bytes. As we can see, with the low IO latency of NVM, the kernel and network overheads dominate the end-to-end -end write latency. The second challenge is that the client kernel buffer cache operates at large block granularity, exacerbating network and storage latencies for small I.O. Small I.O. is common in modern applications, including key value stores and databases. The 256 byte write system call in this example is amplified to four kilobyte granularity by the buffer cache. If the associated block is not already in the cache, we have to fetch it first and the associated I.O. and network amplification further increase latency and waste bandwidth. For failover and recovery, distributed file systems only tackle server failures and client failures are not managed even though they directly affect application quality of service. As such, our search challenge is that the clients incur long failover and recovery times. On a client failure, a backup application may be restarted on a different client. However, the new client will start with a cold cache, causing a time period of high latency I.O. where application level service is not yet restored. To restore the replication factor, the file system must rebuild caches of failed clients from scratch, involving long failover times to reestablish application level service and necessitating high network utilization during recovery. To tackle these challenges and unleash the raw performance provided by NVM, we present a CIS, a distributed file system that provides orders of magnitude higher performance and availability than traditional file systems. A CIS does this by maximizing its leverage of client local NVM, allowing it to provide the following benefits. First, a CIS provides orders of magnitude lower read and write latency by performing data and metadata I.O local to each process and each client machine whenever possible. Second, despite client local use of NVM, a CIS provides linearizability and data crash consistency 
by leveraging a novel crash recoverable distributed coherence protocol for client-side NVM, which we denote as CCNVM. This protocol also replicates client local IO directly to other clients. Third, at least provides high availability by failing over to these cache hot client replicas. For fast recovery, Aziz also recovers the NVM cache of fail clients locally, minimizing network utilization. We next look into how we re-architect the traditional client server distributed file system model to achieve these goals. Our first design choice is to move file system data and metadata management to client local NVM managed by a client shared file system daemon called sharedfs. Secondly, to remove kernel crossing overheads for process local IO, Aziz provides a library file system called libfs. libfs intercepts POSIX file system calls and executes them in user space. Thirdly, libfs writes data and metadata at byte granularity as opposed to blocks to an operation log in process private NVM. In doing so, we provide processes with direct user space data access without block amplification, reducing IO latency, while also providing local durability, which is essential to enable fast recovery. Since, of course, a C is a distributed file system, there is also remote IO. For durability, a C's chain replicates user space operation logs to client replicas via RDMA leveraging the right order properties of RDMA to provide prefix crash consistency. Given that clients replicate hot data to other clients' NVM caches, applications on failing clients can be quickly restarted on any other hot client replica. For reads that miss in client broker caches, an RPC via user space RDMA is used to request data from a remote client. We now move on to consistency. To be able to provide linearizability for shared client local I.O., we introduced CCNVM, a cache coherence protocol for client-side NVM. CCNVM uses leases to provide single writer, multiple reader access to files and directories directly to application processes running on clients. To give an example, creating a file mail1 in Alice's home directory will require a lease over that directory, which involves contacting the cluster manager. The cluster manager is a replicated service like Zookeeper that provides client membership and data location services to the file system, in addition to also managing and arbitrating leases across all shared FSs. After contacting the cluster manager, the shared FS hands the lease to the requesting libfs. Overall, this process requires a context switch and a network round trip. However, once a lease is handed to the process, subsequent file creations in Alice's home directory are done locally without need for synchronization. This mechanism provides local consistency for workloads with temporal locality and optimizes workloads that access uh, directories and files frequently. However, the obvious consequence is that the cluster manager itself can become a scalability bottleneck. To avoid this, we introduce a novel lease delegation mechanism. This allows lease management responsibility to transfer to the client local sharedFS instance. Further requests for the lease on Alice's home directory will be handled by the sharedFS instance without going to the cluster manager. This allows processes on the same client to hand off leases on Alice's home directory with only a context switch, minimizing critical pass latency and in turn improving scalability. Other processes on different clients can similarly manage their own private directories locally. We have now described our main design goals of providing low latency, scalable linearizability and high availability by maximizing use of client local NVM. There are a number of other design components, such as exploiting NUMA locality, utilizing NVM and network bandwidth efficiently, as well as achieving low cost cold storage. These are all detailed in our paper. We now move on to our evaluation. We aim to answer the following questions. For the latency component, we look into how close a CSIS latency is to raw NVM IO latency. 
For the aspect of scalability, we focus on how much CCNVM can improve scalability across multiple processes and nodes. For availability, we focus on how fast we can fail over to another client node. Our experimental setup is comprised of five nodes, each with 48 cores. All nodes are connected to an InfiniBand switch using 40 gigabit per second Connect X3 NICs. Each node is also fitted with six terabyte of NVDIMM and 384 gigabyte of RAM, and the DIMM slots on all machines are fully populated. Our experimental baselines provide a set of different features, which are important to understand before going through the actual evaluation. We evaluate a seats against four systems, Ceph, NFS, Octopus, and Orion. All systems are co configured to use RDMA. Only at CIS, Steph, and Orion replicate. Octopus, which is a resource distributed file system, uses a client server model similar to Ceph and NFS, but performs IO at operation granularity to access NVM efficiently. Orion, another recently published distributed file system, provides a stronger consistency model and localizes IO, but still incurs network overheads to communicate with a centralized metadata server. We use an Orion emulation since the source code is not made available. Compared to all baselines, ASIS is the only file system that localizes metadata synchronization with kernel bypass for I.O. For our first experiment, we look at a micro benchmark that performs a one gigabyte size burst of synchronous writes to a single file. The x-axis shows the I.O. sizes at 128 byte, one kilobyte, and four kilobyte I.O. granularity. And the y-axis shows the average latency in microseconds. Only Assis and Ceph replicate to one other node. At 128 bytes, we find that Assis performs 17 times faster than NFS and 53 times faster than Ceph, which is primarily due to buffer cache block amplification for NFS and Ceph. At 4 kilobyte I.O. size, which is the same as the block size for all systems, NFS and Ceph still perform worse than ACs due to copy overheads to the kernel buffer cache. Ceph is slower than NFS because it replicates. Octopus does not incur block amplification and does not use a buffer cache. Hence, it performs much better than NFS and Ceph. Still, ACs provides up to 2x lower latencies on Octopus due to ACs performing I.O. in user space. Finally, ACs' write latency is only 8% higher than the aggregate latency of a raw local NVM write and a remote NVM write via RDMA. To evaluate scalability, we look at a multi-process shared I.O. microbenchmark. In this benchmark, processes create, write, and rename four kilobyte files. This benchmark is embarrassingly parallel. To eliminate file system synchronization overheads, processes write only to their own private subdirectories. We also disable replication to see how far we can scale without being bottlenecked by the network. We use three testbed nodes and distributed benchmark processes evenly on each node. The X axis shows the number of processes involved in file operations, and the Y axis shows the number of kilo operations performed per second. Both Ceph and Orion use centralized metadata management. Ceph reaches 9,000 operations per second with 192 processes, but stops scaling at 24 processes. Ceph's bottleneck are its metadata servers. Orion also does not scale due to its centralized metadata management and reaches 80,000 operations per second, also saturating in 24 processes. Assis uses CCNVM, which uses leases for client local synchronization, allowing it to scale until it's limited by client local NVM write bandwidths. Assis outperforms Ceph and Orion by 554 times and 69 times with 194 processes respectively. The main takeaway here is that a CE scales because of its use of client local synchronization provided by CCNVM. To test our scalability with a real application, we use Postfix, a multi process mail delivery agent. Postfix can generate hundreds of processes and performs file creations and renames to deliver mail, similarly to the prior benchmark. We configured this benchmark to replace 70 gigabyte worth of emails. 
Postfix uses a pool of mail delivery processes that pull mail from an incoming mail queue and deliver it to one or more recipients. We use a mail directory format where each recipient has their own directory and one file is created per mail message delivered to recipient. For our workload, we use a real email trace with an average mail size of 200 kilobytes. We set up Postfix to parallelize its mail delivery on three nodes and use one machine to generate the workload. We use two configurations for mail delivery. The basic approach is to balance the workload uniformly over different machines using round robin, which can incur synchronization overheads when nodes access mail directories concurrently. We can also use a sharded configuration that basically uh, shards by the recipient to reduce concurrent access to shared directories across file system clients. We repeat the experiment with a varying number of postfix processes shown on the x-axis. The y-axis is the average throughput and mails delivered per second. Assis's round-robin configuration scales much better than Ceph and is able to reach around 1,900 mails per second, limited by network bandwidths. Ceph only delivers roughly 500 mails per second due to central metadata management. Ceph's performance does not change when sharding, hence we only show one configuration. We see that sharding can achieve better scalability for Assis since Assis leads delegation scheme adapts to the application sharding patterns, further reducing overhead via shard local synchronization. We now move on to failover. In this scenario, we have two replicas, one primary and the other is a backup. We run level DB for post Ceph and Assis configurations shown at the top and bottom of this slide respectively. On the left, we show the setup of the cluster and on the right, we see a timeline of events before, during, and after failover. In the timeline, the X axis shows time in seconds and the Y axis is the level DB latency in seconds for each executed operation shown in log scale. Pre-failure, we see bursts of low latency in between stretches of high latency. This is level DB steady state. Bursts show level DB writes to its own DRAM log. These are periodically merged with files when the DRAM log is full, causing writes that are higher latency and sometimes blocking with Ceph, as the writes wait on the file system to persist the DRAM log. After a primary failure occurs, it takes roughly one second for the cluster manager to detect this. Assis allows near instantaneous failover to a cache hot backup and takes only 230 milliseconds for level DB to resume steady state performance. On Ceph, level DB takes 3.7 seconds shown by the light gray box to restore its database on the backup. This is because Ceph does not provide data crash consistency. Level DB is blocked again soon thereafter by Ceph persisting the DRAM log shown by the second light gray box. This process involves access to further files that are called in the primary's cache, resulting in an additional 15.6 second delay before reaching steady state for a total of 23.7 second aggregate failover time. A seize fails over 103 times faster than Ceph. Emulating the time taken for a full primary reboot, we restart the file system daemons on the primary after 30 seconds. During this time, many level DB operations occur on the backup that need to be applied to the primary when it recovers. A season cluster manager keeps track of this delta during the time that the primary is down. As soon as the primary is back online, we cleanly close level DB on the backup and restart it on the primary. Both Assis and Ceph allow applications to operate during primary recovery. Assis uses a track delta to locally recover valid blocks in the primary's non-volatile cache. Level DB returns to full performance 938 milliseconds after restarting it on the recovering primary. Ceph has to rebuild the primary's cache in its entirety, causing delays highlighted and light gray, and it takes overall 43.4 seconds to, uh, for level DB to reach full performance after the recovery starts. At least recovers to full performance 46 times faster than Ceph. To conclude, 
That seeds is a distributed file system that uses client local NVM to simultaneously provide low latency, scalability, uh, and high availability. To do so, a seeds performs local remote I.O. from user space and uses CCNVM, a novel distributed coherence protocol to provide scalability, linearizability, and crash consistency. Finally, a seeds fails over faster to catch hot replica client replicas to provide high availability. A seeds provides order of magnitude, lower write latency, faster failover, and better scalability than the state of the art tested on real cloud applications such as Postfix and LevelDB. Our source code is available. For questions, you can reach us via the email given on the slide. Thank you.